Akkati is a dusty, almost deserted village. It sits on the edge of the dry, flat plain between Altai City and Borajin. Here is the home of 70-year-old Sibuzge player Baizal Nabi. Surrounded by the ruckus, bustle and affection of his large extended family, Bazal Nabi invites guests into his home. He takes his self-made subizgu and starts to play. <laughs> he is old and has a hard time holding the breath needed for both the kumoi and the flute melody. But in his playing is the delicate echo of his people's history and resilience. Persecuted during the Cultural Revolution, Baizal was forced to forego all of his traditional pastimes, including hunting with eagles and Sibba's gu playing. He was openly criticized and beaten for his musical gifts. Today he is hunched over and it is readily evident that he has been emotionally scarred by the fast-paced changes that have transformed the traditional culture of his family and community. A couple hundred kilometers south of Akkachi lies Qinghe County. The county is a mere stone's throw from China's border with Mongolia, and today the region is known as the epicenter of the Sibzge revival. Master player Hutubai leads that revival. <laughs> Kutubai grew up under the interdictions of the Cultural Revolution and learned the Sibizge secretly with two of Altai's most famous players, Jetmek and Jutetgen, both of whom were Hutubai's relatives. Hutubai says, in the early 20th century, the Sibizge was still being passed down from father to son. But because it is so hard to learn, the Sibizge even then was not very widespread. After the start of the Cultural Revolution, however, everything stopped, and the Sibizge, like the Dumbra, was prohibited. Due to the Cultural Revolution's destructive legacy, very few people still play the Sibizge today. This lack of Sibizge players is further compounded by the difficulty and challenge of Sibizge playing itself. Hutubai says, to play a dungbra, you simply need to plug the strings. But for the Sibizge, to even have one sound come out, you have to work a lot. Kutubai adds, even though many students start learning the Sibizge, many drop it because of the challenge and serious commitment needed to become a good player. Faced with the challenge of ensuring the survival of the Sibizge, Kutubai has broken with convention and traditional gender roles and has taught the Sibizge to his daughter, Kun Chuak. Women play the Dumbra in Kubus, Hutubai says. I have never heard of a woman playing the Sibizge. But my daughter, Kun Chuak, is learning to play. She is an excellent player, he adds. Kutubai feels a responsibility to preserve this thousand-year-old instrument, which he says predates the creation of the Kazakh tribes. The soft hush of the flute, combined with the deep moaning of the kumoi, is an instrument to speak of pain and suffering, and Hutubai's songs are sad laments, slow notes, heavy with emotion. Ah!